and I'm ready to sing for you tonight. After this, I gotta warm up my voice for at least 15 minutes so that I can sing. Are we recording? With Rob. Yeah, with Rob. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and sing with you. Hello, this is Caroline Grace, and I'm hanging out with Rob on Front Row Live. You're about to kill it out there. I walked in, the lights are shining so cool. Like, the, everything is so cool. Tell me about creating tonight. For sure. <laughs> Literally, I could cry because I have been playing this for a long time now, and yeah. literally this concept was in my mind for so long. Yeah. It's like the inside of my brain has come to life, <laughs> which is like the coolest thing in the world. Everything from like the music to the visuals, mm. like we wanted tonight to almost feel like you were inside one of the music videos from the EP, okay. and um, and those music videos were kind of sort of like the inside of my brain too, oh, so man. this is like my little dreamland we see this little bit of it you know the ep is out now and like fans are listening to the ep but like you go into the studio and create this ep and did all of this kind of like flow in your head as you were writing it oh definitely i mean so the original concept for the ep was um i was gonna call it dark room mm. and it was a um i got the idea when i was thinking about how photos develop in a dark room and how mm. you can't bring a photo into the light until it's fully developed and okay. that's kind of like a person you can't like be fully the best version of yourself until you've dealt with all the bad right. and so that then I ended up calling it afraid of the dark because I was like everybody's kind of afraid of that dark room that's dark space in their mind mm -hmm. but once they work through their issues it's like they have the power to illuminate or whatever and so that's what the EP was so I would bring that to light visually it's really dark and moody out there with right. the little bits of lights peeking through and it's like you'll see it as the night evolves mm. it's like eventually all the lights light up and it's like you've made it through so cool. that crazy part of your brain that's yeah. so cool I don't know how you put all of that together <laughs> and like you make it come to life like yeah. that's the, I think that's crazier than actually having those things in mind like yeah. you made it come to life now when you started working on this EP did Pooh Bear work on this with you as well or he worked on a couple tracks with you so Pooh Bear did not work on this EP okay. we actually did two singles together okay. one of the singles is out and one of the singles is not out <laughs> so um but yeah he the first single I ever put out was done by Pooh Bear and then another one that I have that to be TBD when that mm -hmm. will come out um but I'm hopeful to work with him and do another EP or something would right. be incredible now yeah. the fact that you got to work with him before like working on an EP like how did that kind of impact the way that you came into the studio that second time with a different producer yeah for sure I mean, the first, like, day I walked into the studio with Pooh Bear, I was so intimidated because I'm like, this guy is a freaking hit maker, and right. I was 20, like, or 19, and, like, the day before in a writing class at USC, and I'm wow. like, whoa, what is going on? Yeah. Um, but it really, he was the kindest, humblest guy, mm -hmm. and so incredible to work with, and it really showed me that if I'm just confident, I can, I can do it, and I could write with anybody, and I, I was... It, in the room with probably the best songwriter in the world right. and we wrote together and I'm like it gave me the courage to do it with anybody mm -hmm. and it just showed me that no idea is stupid um and you just have to put yourself out there and confidence is everything right mm -hmm. now now do you feel like that confidence is everything for you now like do you feel like you're always confident now or do you still feel like there's times when you're like I don't know if I can do this yeah I mean like no I'm scared out of my mind right now to go perform like I'm I'm still have the same fears and everything yeah. but I think confidence is more so like the conscious decision to choose to be confident and like okay I'm really nervous I'm scared mm -hmm. but I'm gonna be brave and I'm gonna have the courage to overcome it and I think that's what confidence is and it's like loving yourself enough that you're like even though I'm scared I'm still gonna do it and I'm gonna do a flipping good job at it right. so I didn't know if I could say another word <laughs> a fucking good job at it so when you when you were working with these in the uh, when you're working in the studio with for this EP like was there a particular song that you were the most excited to do because you were kind of trying something different hi Okay, so the single that's out right now. Yes, yes. Um, so High is the first track I put out that is under the genre like R&B contemporary. Everything okay. was kind of like pop R&B crossover, and that one's pretty straight R&B, mm -hmm. and that's something I've been wanting to do for a while. And so that was like actually the last song we recorded, and I was like, oh my gosh, I need to do a project all in this direction because it's much more stripped down right. feel. And I freaking love that song. And so I was definitely really, really excited to to do that one and I want to see where that goes creatively from here. Right. Now at the same time because it was more stripped down did that kind of scare you a little bit? Totally. I mean, I felt pretty 
the reason why I had never done it before was because I didn't really feel like I could. Mm. I was kind of in this box of like, I'm pop, I'm pop, I'm pop. And I'm yeah. like, no, I, I've been listening to soul R&B my whole life. And like, that's where my voice naturally sits. That's where I want to go. Mm. And so I kind of just did it and it worked, I think. So <laughs> <laughs> so going transitioning from soul R&B to, to more of pop or vice versa, like, do you feel like that it changes the way that you write the music? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think that there's something consistent throughout all my music, and that's just being like pretty straightforward, vulnerable, genuine. Like mm. my lyrics, I've never been high, or like another song, like I'm done and I'm over you, or mm. I knew you were gonna miss me. And right. so, like, but having that more stripped down vibe did allow me more time, like more of a space to be like 100% just genuine and mm. authentic. So I think I'm gonna play more into that going forward too. Okay. Yeah. Now, does that does that uh, is it safe to say that now you kind of have to, the way you warm up is different or, or the way that you train your vocals is different now? Because of the R&B, mm -hmm. well, for sure. I mean, honestly, it's easier for me to sing in that vibe, way easier, because even the stuff I was doing more that was more straight pop, it was like I felt like I was straining a little bit and mm -hmm. I didn't really feel like my body was in it. I didn't really, and the reason was because it, it wasn't exactly what I think I was like literally made to do. Right. And so now it's kind of like my voice, it's almost just like my body's like a vessel for, it, it comes out so much easier. Now is this the sound that you've, you, this, this is it, this is Caroline Grace, or you still, you, do you still feel like you're still trying to discover who you are as an artist? I think that, I mean, we're constantly evolving and changing as humans mm -hmm. and as people. And I mean, I'm still young, I'm 22. And so as I like go through my life, I'm gonna be changing and depending on like things in my life, I'll be changing. And right. um, so I think that there's a constant evolution of an artist. And I think that's what's so amazing. I mean, look at Madonna. She's constantly reinventing herself. And right. um, I think that I found my sound, yes, for what it is right now. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm going to continue down that and not stray, try to stray from that. But, you know, if something leads me creatively into something else, I'm going to go there. But it's what's going to remain consistent is just that it's going to be genuine to me. Right. Now, with the tracks that are on this EP, like, why are these tracks so important that they made it to this EP? Because it's your debut EP. It's a kind of a big deal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so these tracks, I don't know. Like, honestly, I used to think that, like, it had to be so hard to write a song. It had to be so hard. And, like, I wrote these songs with, this, um, with a dear friend, J.D. Walker. He's an amazing producer. And they were so easy to write. And I was like... <laughs> Like, we would walk out of studio and be like, well, that's done. Wow. Like, after one day. Like, high was written in an afternoon. And I'm like, what? And like, written, done. And, crazy. yeah, crazy. And I realized, like, it, it should be easy. Because it, that just means it just kind of happens. And that's actually something Pubert told me. He told me that if it takes more, if it takes you more than, like, an hour to write a hit song, it's not a hit song. <laughs> so, okay. yeah. All just right. because it's, like, I don't know. It should just flow. So is it safe to say that if you start a song, you can't finish it, you trash it? You don't, or do you still save it for maybe another time? I think that you save it for sure because you never know. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, every situation is different. Right. Um, however, I am big on like, I want it to come out. If I'm roadblocking, right. it's like move to the next thing. And as it comes out naturally like that, when you're in the studio, vulnerability um, is different. You know, I feel like when people, I feel like when artists are writing a track that, that, is very vulnerable. I feel like you can't do many takes of that. Like the, that first vocal take that, you know, your, your, your voice kind of went out a little bit because you felt that emotion or whatever. Like, I feel like that should be the take. Do you feel the same way? Yeah. I mean, it can't be faked. You have to be feeling it. And that's what it's about because if you don't feel it, the listener, the audience, they're not going to feel it. Right. And so, yeah, I think that that was another thing. He was, when I was working with he kept calling me one take Tony. And he's like, remember, one take Tony. You only you only do it once. And if it takes more than that, we're, we're going to change. Yeah, or like change the melody, change the lyric wow. if it's not coming out right. Because it has to it has to feel right. Right. Yeah. So the EP's out now. You're going to put a killer performance out there. Yeah. What else is next for you? Like, is there going to be any more performances, like, to promote this EP? Oh, yeah. Like, that's a huge plan. And I... I'm hopeful to be touring it um, mm -hmm. throughout the rest of the year. That yeah. would be absolutely incredible. But yeah, I'm not stopping anytime soon. This is the debut, so <laughs> yeah. And, and as we're on the topic of touring, you had the opportunity to go on tour with Kyle mm -hmm. and Mark Bassey. And what did that teach you? What did that What did that experience teach you? Especially like watching them perform and watching them set up for tour, and then yeah. watching them go to the next state. Yeah. Like, what did you get out of that? Well. 
To be honest, I was so nervous to go into that tour because I was the only girl. So it was Kyle, Marky Basie, and Toby Lou. And I was like, it was the first time I'd ever done a tour. Mm. I was still in school. I was doing both at the same time. And um, I, I was so nervous and I just thought like, I don't know, I just didn't know what to expect and they were so kind and they were such hard workers mm -hmm. and it really just showed me like how much hard work has to go into it and how you have to be, treat people with kindness and respect. Like right. Kyle was the most, such a good guy and he worked his butt off. Like you think that musicians after they perform go and party and do yep. this and that, it's like, no, he worked his butt off and it was really inspiring to see that you have to put in that amount of effort to get to where he is, right. you know? That's really cool. Like it, that's a cool opportunity. I love Kyle. He's one of my favorite uh, lyricists as well. Like his storytelling is insane. Yeah. So amazing. being there like for what a week or so that you went on tour yeah, with him yeah. must have been amazing. It was incredible. Now, lastly, what does Lady Driver mean to you? So Lady Driver, I've actually known the producers of the film for a while now, and they're so incredible and amazing. Um, and the movie is about this like young girl mm. who has a stream of being a race car driver, but she's like, I can't do it because like, or not, she doesn't feel like she can't do it, but she's going up against all the guys. Right. And I actually used to race cars when I was a little girl. And oh, no. yeah, that was my other dream other than being a singer. Was that was your other job. <laughs> yeah, I was being a race car driver. I want to do that. And I was the only girl amongst all the boys. Wow. And that's kind of sometimes how I feel now too, is like, I'm kind of, you have to fight for it. Mm. And so being able to join up and, and do it together was like, phenomenal because it's like we're b both lady driver and my brand and the song mm. that is in lady driver just coming together it's just like you know celebrating badass women who want to do their thing and it goes the same for men anybody who feels like they can't do something is maybe a little bit like afraid to do something because they don't feel like they've necessarily fit in or they can it's just like showing them that they can and hopefully inspiring a lot of people that's amazing. I can't wait to hear that track as well. Yes, it's going to be awesome. I'm excited for you to hear it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me. There's a lot of people out there waiting for you to hit that stage. So thanks for hanging out with me. You guys be sure to check out Caroline Grace. Debut EP is out now. It is called? Afraid of the Dark. I thought you almost forgot. I, I, I actually get it. Oh, my goodness. Thanks my for watching brain, here on Front Row Live.